Hi folks, today I want to talk about bias and offset in audio amplifiers, what it is, how we check and adjust it, and why it's important. Now I'm going to start with bias. We have to apply bias to transistors, tubes, even audio tape, and we do so for the same reason, because these are essentially nonlinear devices or media, and what we want to do is we want to push our signal into the linear portion of the response curve. Now, let me just give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. A transistor will have a response curve that looks something like this, okay? And we have cutoff on this end and saturation over here. By applying a small amount of current to our transistors or voltage to our FETs or tubes, we can have our signal swing through this area here. This will yield us a linear response and a low distortion signal. Now, the other thing we have to think about when we're biasing an amplifier is we need to keep these transistors out of cutoff because if we don't, we get crossover distortion. You may have heard the term, but basically what it is, is that your transistor cuts off during the zero crossing point of the sine wave. And you wind up getting a sine wave that looks something like this, where it cuts off in here. If you saw the video on the Onkyo I did, that was a good demonstration of what cutoff looks like or crossover distortion. The other thing is we want to keep the transistor out of saturation because if it saturates, again, we will have a nonlinear response. So the whole point of bias is to make sure our signal falls in the linear portion of the response of the device or media. All right. Offset is just basically, and I'm going to put another schematic up here, this is, hold on one moment. Okay, this is a schematic of a Sansui AU717 output stage. Now I'm going to move the camera in just a little bit so you can get a better look here. What I want to point out is, We have our output transistors here and here, and our signal is taken off at this point. Up here we have a voltage rail that's about positive 56 volts. Down here we have one that is about negative 56 volts. We want to have our transistors balance at this point so we have zero volts DC. And most amplifiers will have an adjustment for this, not all. Now, examples of ones that don't have are capacitively coupled amps, uh, capacitor coupled amps. Um, direct um, DC or direct coupled stages like this came, came about probably in the later, mid to late 70s. And uh, if you have a capacitor coupled amp, you don't have an offset adjustment because the capacitor will block the DC from getting into your output stage. Um, some amplifiers like the Onkyo I mentioned earlier um, are servo designs where they have basically an automatic offset. You don't have to adjust anything, they're always low. Some amplifiers simply have no provision for offset and if you have no provision and you have two transistors in the front end, what you need to do is match a pair very closely, ideally thermally couple them together and replace what's in there. And that'll usually drop your offset. So the other thing I want to talk about now is bias. And I'm going to show you how we bias this particular amplifier. Okay, so in order to measure the bias for this amplifier, we're going to measure the voltage across both of our emitter resistors. And this particular amplifier has test points that are going to come off of here and here. The emitter resistors are 0.33 ohms apiece. So we're going to measure across a resistance of 0.66 ohms. 
Okay, I'm set up in front of the amplifier here, and it's always a good idea that before you connect anything to an amplifier, you have the power off, filter caps have had time to discharge. Okay, and remember, if you're trying this at home, you're doing so at your own risk. There are dangerous voltages that are exposed anytime you have the cover off, so exercise caution. I was taught in electronics school to keep one hand in your pocket when you're probing inside of a live amplifier. This prevents you from having a current source that would go through your thoracic cavity. Just food for thought. Exercise caution and everything should be fine. Anyhow, this amplifier is off and I like to use these little mini grabber clips. Um, a lot less chances of short circuits. So I'm going to connect up to our test point here. Pardon me, wrong one. Test point here and here. We're only going to do the left channel. You've seen one, you've seen them both. Now according to our service manual, we have an offset, very common, of zero volts, give or take five millivolts. Our bias is 20 millivolts, give or take one millivolt. So these are our goals. You'll find that bias will drift with temperature and offset is very, very touchy on some amplifiers. This one in particular, even though it has a fine and a coarse offset, it can be a real bear to get them right. And some people like to use multi-turn pots, either 10 or even 25 turn. So that is not an issue. I use the single turn pots. You can get it. You just have to be patient. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn this amplifier on and we'll wait for it to come out of protect. Okay, so the amplifier is out of protect. This meter is looking at our bias. This meter back here, let me get it in the frame, is looking at our offset. Okay. All right, very good. So our offset is really good right now and I hate to touch it because you'll see just how touchy these adjustments are. So this is the offset. I haven't even turned the tool. Uh, I just put the tool in the uh, offset pot. It's already over 300 millivolts. Did I mention these were touchy? Okay, this is the fine adjust. You can see why I didn't want to touch it when it was below one millivolt. Okay, we got about negative 2.6, 2.7 millivolts. It'll go positive or negative depending on which way you have it leaned, either toward the, the PNPs or the NPNs. Now this is our bias. And we adjust that pot. If you can look, you can see on the other board, these are the offset pots. This is the bias pot. Okay, so we just and we want that right at 20 give or take one millivolt now this is going to drift with temperature so we need to keep an eye on it but that's the procedure and that's the reasoning behind it you don't want DC coming out of your amplifier this can um, cause your woofers to overheat it won't affect your tweeters because you have a crossover and the capacitors in the crossover are going to block any DC. 
you want your bias to be right so you have low distortion and not so high that you have excessive heat coming out of your output stages heat is the enemy of semiconductors so we need to check these to make sure that they fall into the parameters outlined in the service manual You'll find some service manuals are not always correct as far as test points go. Um, Marantz are notorious for this. So you need to make sure you're, you're testing at the right test points. And the way I do this is I just, before I turn the power on, I just put my meter in ohms and just see if I can measure my uh, emitter resistors. Now you're going to have a, a little bit of... Um, <coughs> error due to the, the leads and the contact resistors because when you're measuring resistors that are under one ohm um, you really need to do what they call four wire measurement but anyhow I'm going to put this in ohms you'll see it says one ohm we're probably in the right place but if you really want to know I'm just going to show you this as an aside here This meter will do what's known as four wire ohms measurement. And to do four wire ohms measurement, you need to have something like this. These are called Kelvin leads or Kelvin clips. And they plug into your meter like this. And I'm gonna to connect to those test points And it says 0.76 ohm. They're 5% resistors. That's probably close enough. Um, these clips actually have a sense and an input side. And when you clip it onto the uh, point you're testing, and I'm just cl clipped onto our test points here, you can see that we are in the right place. We have 0.76 Point seven six eight ohms we know that these are our test points you're not always going to be lucky enough to have test points in a lot of amplifiers they'll just tell you where to clip onto in the circuit this is a good confidence check if you read one ohm like I'm reading here you're probably in the right place if you're not you're probably in the wrong place okay I keep a copy of an Ohm's Law wheel on my bench. It's great for calculating power, or in this case, when we want to determine what our bias current really is, we know we are measuring 20 millivolts at our test points. But what does that mean as far as how much current is going through our output stage? Um, most bias currents are in the neighborhood of 20 to 50 milliamps. There are some outliers. I just did a Marantz 2325 you may have seen in the video, and they wanted 75 milliamps of bias current. This causes that amplifier to run stupidly hot, and when I get it back from the owner, which I've spoken with him about, I'm dialing that down, because that just ain't right. It's just gonna cause excessive heat and ex uh, possibly shorten the life of the output stage. So, we know this one, it's supposed to be set at 20 millivolts. How much bias current is that going to give us? Ohm's law will tell us if we want to know what the current is, we can take the voltage, which is 20 millivolts, and divide it by 0.66 ohms, which is the sum of our two 0.33 ohm emitter resistors. That tells us that we have 30 milliamps You can calculate this for anything, and if you don't have specifications, you can always determine what it's supposed to be by using Ohm's Law. You can just say, well, I want to set it to 20, we'll, we'll call it 30 milliamps. You can calculate by the emitter resistors in there how much, oh, excuse me, how much, how many millivolts you want. So in order to calculate that, we need to figure out what our voltage is going to be. We know what the current is, and we know what the resistance is. So we'll just use this as an example. So if we want 30 milliamps, I'm going to do 30 
exponent negative 3 times 0.66 and that gives us 19.8 or 20 milliamps. You can do the same thing with any amplifier. If you have 0.47 ohm or if you have any other value and you want to calculate what you need to measure and what you need to set, Ohm's Law is your friend. Anyhow, I'm going to sign this off now. I'm starting to ramble. That's why I keep this video short. Uh, thank you for watching this. And as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Take care.